Hi, this is Dr. Daly. I'm the Regional EMS Medical Director for the Hudson Mohawk or Remo region of New York State. And I'm here talking about a Department of Health protocol issued on April 17th. This guidance document was issued by the Department of Health Bureau of EMS and Trauma with some specific goals, most important of which is to reduce the risk to EMS providers while optimizing outcomes for patients during this public health emergency of COVID-19. Physicians from across New York State assisted with the development of these guidelines, and they apply now during the public health emergency. This is gonna change many of the things about providing cardiac arrest care. Most importantly, it's going to change our awareness of how we make sure that EMS providers are being kept safe throughout resuscitative efforts. Initially, you'll approach and evaluate whether or not the patient is a DNR or meets criteria for obvious death. In those cases, as in the past, you won't initiate resuscitation. If, however, this is an EMS witnessed cardiac arrest, then we're going to initiate resuscitation. If it was not an EMS witnessed cardiac arrest, a single provider in appropriate PPE will apply an AED or a monitor. When the provider has placed the monitor on the patient, we'll then look to see what the monitor reveals. If it's a BLS shockable rhythm or an ALS shockable rhythm or PEA, we will initiate resuscitation. Remember, this is about saving lives. However, we need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe. Providers that are, are working on this cardiac arrest should be in PPE that's appropriate for an aerosol generating procedure. You should only use the minimum number of providers necessary to provide good cardiac arrest care. You should initiate compression only CPR rather than CPR with interspersed ventilations in order to reduce aerosolization of viral particles. You're gonna place an OPA or an NPA, an oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal airway, cover the face with a surgical mask and apply a non-rebreather at 10 liters per minute. This is called passive oxygenation. And what it'll allow is oxygen to go in and out of the lungs with the compressions that are taking place. The BVM should only be used if there's an advanced airway present and only if a viral filter is attached to that advanced airway. Superglottic airways should be considered first line for pre-hospital cardiac arrest patients. If there's no return of spontaneous circulation after 20 minutes, you may terminate the resuscitation. This is realizing that every case is different. Every clinical situation will be different. Use your best medical judgment to guide resuscitative efforts. You may both terminate or not initiate resuscitation based on this protocol, but you may also call medical control with any concerns or for guidance. If you believe that your resuscitative efforts should continue for longer than the 20 minutes designated in the protocol, you may continue. If you believe that this will be of the best interest to the patient, one potential example of this could be someone whose rhythm keeps on changing. This protocol cannot describe every clinical situation that you will face. Call medical control with any questions. Remember, no one should be assisting of the cardiac arrest resuscitation unless they have appropriate PPE, because our own health must be paramount throughout this public health emergency. None of these answers are easy, and we face new and strange times. What I must remind you every time, wash your hands, maintain social distancing, hang in there, and above all, stay safe.